and you can unpin me so that Cynthia is truly happy to focused. girl. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, our next guest is Cynthia Sue Larson. She is the author of Reality Shifters, and we are going to be talking to her today about how we can shift our own realities, which is really, really exciting. She is the best selling author of six books that help people visualize and access whole new worlds of possibility. She hosts Living the Quantum Dream on Dream Vision 7 radio network and has been featured on the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, Coast to Coast AM, and the BBC. Cynthia has presented papers at international conferences on science, spirituality, and consciousness, and has a degree in physics from UC Berkeley, an MBA degree, and a Doctor mm -hmm. of Divini Divinity. Cynthia has shared findings from her scientific research in the fields of quantum physics, quantum biology, the placebo effect, positive psychology, sociology, and alternative medicine in journals ranging from cosmos and history to magical blend to parabola. Her popular e-zine, Reality Shifters, is eagerly awaited each month by thousands of subscribers worldwide. She loves to ask in every question, in every situation, how good can it get? Cynthia, it is a delight to have you here today. Oh, thank you, Anna. And is it okay to show some slides? I, I can, I've got a slideshow that I can start with. If that's Absolutely. Possible. Are you just, before you start your slideshow though, yeah. can you quickly share with the audience how you got into what you're doing and what the big shift you had to make in life was? Gosh, it's, um, it's been a lifelong journey since I, did actually have um, memories of what, who I was before I was born. So it really starts there. It's being a child fascinated by the topic of consciousness all my life. But then it, um, my life dove into this topic of reality shifts big time when I started experiencing them and witnessing things appearing, disappearing, transforming and transporting. So uh, with my background in physics, at that point I was in my, um, 20s and 30s. So I began my career really dedicating the last more than 20 years to researching what's going on when consciousness changes the physical world. What is happening? How does that work? Uh, and just really being uh, able and excited to share firsthand reports of these experiences from people around the world before the topic of law of attraction and all these other things really took flight. Um, before there was what the bleep do we know, um, I was writing about this. So it's, I've been in the field for quite a long time and I, I really credit my training in physics combined with my experience as a basically an optimistic mystic <laughs> to uh, helping lead the way and pioneer methods and techniques uh, for people just everyday people to improve their lives. Because my principal idea is that we are all reality shifters. And so today I'd like to bring that down to earth for people and just make it something that's fun. And so instead of having this dream of there's this life that I'd love to live and it's always outside my reach, let's bring it closer. Let's feel what that feels like. Let's make it start happening. Mm, I love it. Okay, so you say you have a presentation prepared for us, so I'm going to let you just roll with it. Okay, thank you. And if you get me, um, let's see, do I do anything to um, start or I'll just start? Do you have show. screen share? Let's see. Hang on. Click something before I saw. Where is that? Um, yes. Okay, so I'm just choosing what we're doing. Um, I guess I'll share. Give me two choices here. I guess I'll go with um, this one. Okay. And let's see. Hopefully everybody can still hear me and see me. Yep. Good. Perfect. So this is the cover slide, Shift Your Reality. Here's my background, which Anna, you did a great job describing so much about me. If people want to find out more, just the best thing is to contact me or find out more. To see my videos, my monthly newsletter, and all that good stuff, it's realityshifters.com. And I've also, I've been on Gaia TV. You know, I've been on some various things. So the key ideas today that I'd like to present 
for you. Number one, I mentioned it already. We are all reality shifters and we experience things where things go missing, uh, like socks in the laundry and so forth. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's possible to experience some really positive reality shifts. And I've had some real good ones. We'll talk about the role of consciousness, which is key, and how to really employ that. I'm so glad I caught the tail end of Matt's presentation about stories. That really is important. And I'll, be, I'll love to riff on that. And then get and stay grounded and neutral, super important for success. And then align yourself with what you love, which is also extremely important. So what do I mean by saying that we're all reality shifters? Um, basically, if you've ever been in that daydreamy state of mind where you're not fixated on anything, um, that's optimal for coming out of that daydream state of mind and feeling like you've noticed something change. Nowadays, the term Mandela effect is becoming a big thing. And this is a group shared experience of that kind of a shift. Um, I'm also the president of the International Mandela Effect Conference, and we do monthly events helping people make positive changes in the world. But uh, basically, today we're just looking at our own lives. So to get into that daydreamy state of awareness is very valuable. Um, in, in my childhood, when I was quite young, I noticed that I could think stop rain or start rain. And if I was the only one, observing the rain, this worked like a charm. Every time I think stop rain, it would stop instantly. And I'd think start and it would start again. As soon as I brought my mother to come show her, look mom, look what I can do. And she looked very kind of um, cynical, <laughs> skeptical. And she had her arms crossed in front of her, which is not a good sign. She's like, okay, what? <laughs> and then I, I tried to explain it, it didn't work. Uh, but then later when I had a kundalini awakening and a big rush of energy was coming through my body, the kind of thing that can happen if you meditate a lot, um, then again, I could just start rain and stop rain, except there was a delay because in my thirties, when I was doing this, my trained Western scientifically trained mind knew that if you think stop rain, you're stopping it at the spigot, the clouds. <laughs> then I re it made me laugh. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. I did this faster when I was a kid. And of course that's also doable, but I think it's interesting to play with nature, play with reality. Um, I had experiences healing things. If any of this re resonates for you, that's what we're tapping into here. Um, I noticed that I could help our old car, our family Chevrolet. This is a picture of what it looked like. Um, sometimes it wouldn't start starters were kind of would go on the fritz or something i didn't i was too young to know what the mechanics were but i knew that if i just felt love for things like the tv set or the car and really felt grounded and loving toward them then they would start so i share a lot of these experiences in my book reality shifts when consciousness changes the physical world and this is everything from those missing socks in the laundry to synchronicity uh, to actually seeing dead people alive again, which the Mandela effect is named after, Nelson Mandela, as well as spontaneous remissions. So it's really good if you have a broken leg or a broken arm or some kind of injury or illness, and then things like traveling far in a short time. Now here's an example, one example from the book, just big things can change. This is a statue, a sundial sculpture in my hometown of Berkeley, California, where I studied physics at UC Berkeley. And I would go and have brunch with my friends. One day, the sundial sculpture, which is so big a child, that's my younger daughter at the top of it, could climb up on it to it. Yet, it, uh, although we'd never seen it, my friends and I, who were all project managers, high-level managers at um, Citibank, actually, I had never seen this before. So this is not some woo-woo flaky thing. This is a larger-than-life, twice-as-real, <laughs> decades-old sundial sculpture symbolic of space and time suddenly appearing right as I was talking to my friends and asking them, have you ever seen these kinds of reality shifts? So they can be shared. Just one more quick slide to give this a sense of the breadth and depth and scope of this phenomenon. I've conducted two surveys in 2000 and 2013, just looking at what kind of things can happen. What can we change? What can we experience? And some of the things that are most common would be synchronicity and coincidences finding parking spots right where you need them, when you need them. Um, then people start noticing things going missing. It's obvious when you're looking for it, it's not where you put it. Uh, another big one is time slowing down, stopping and speeding up. 
Um, there are lots of these, uh, and I go into a great deal of detail in my books. But what I want to focus on is the positive side and how it affects our lives. Why would we want to shift reality? Well, one of the biggest reasons is the power of the placebo effect. And this is being studied now by universities and doctors have known about it since World War I when they ran out of some of the, the painkiller supply that they needed to be able to offer for people wounded in the field. And they started prescribing all they had on hand, which was just saline solution, simply salt water. And the nurses and doctors felt a bit concerned, like, should we be doing this? First, do no harm. Uh, but they wanted to do something. And so they actually gave salt water saline injections to these wounded soldiers in World War I. Many of them got better. And that was like, I think between 20 to 35% um, of the people that would be given something like that would notice a huge improvement. And it was statistically significant and something that could be replicated in scientific studies. What's fascinating to me is that this placebo effect has been doubling in efficacy over the last 30 years since we've been meditating, since we've got movies like What the Bleep Do We Know, we're studying things like Law of Attraction, we're aware of the power of our mind, we're practicing yoga, so now if someone told me you're getting, we're doing a placebo trial and you might get the placebo, I'd say, yay, because for me, I would know I'm just going to benefit from this. I know the benefit can really take effect. And that's not just saline solutions. These placebos can also just be someone in a white lab coat telling someone that um, your vision is now perfect or you are going to do great on this test. Just seeing someone in a position of some authority saying such positive things often has the power to completely transform performance in, uh, in these controlled scientific studies that have been um, conducted. So I'm gonna touch on some physics here. And this is, I'm not gonna go deep into physics, but I need to describe a few simple things. And it starts with the founder of quantum physics. He's Max Planck. He coined the term quantum. Uh, he chose quanta because it means something so small, so indivisible, that that would be what the idea at the time when they looked at quantum physics, supposedly the building blocks of matter. This is Max Planck himself saying, I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. We cannot, cannot get behind consciousness. Everything we talk about, everything we regard as existing postulates consciousness. And okay, and then here's the inventor, one of the two inventors of calculus, uh, Leibniz, and he lived hundreds of years ago, but he was brilliant. In, in addition to coming up with calculus, I love his description of consciousness. It's still my personal favorite because he notices something about it. He notices that when we have a first order perception, like you see that word like stopwatch, we got that one in our little breakout group in the storytelling exercise or towel or something like that. Or maybe you just feel something in your senses, like you hear a noise in the background or see something. That's a first order perception. A second order reflective perception is where consciousness comes in and you're noticing, I heard something, I saw something, I felt something. And so this is distinction between that original first order perception and then the apperception that comes later is extremely important. And that's where consciousness uh, resides. It really requires both of these factors. And then what he also said was that conscious perception arises gradually by degrees from perceptions that are too minute to be noticed. What we think of now would be subconscious perceptions, things that, that are a little below our threshold of our conscious awareness. So here's a picture of a butterfly landing on someone's nose. We perceived that, and if someone knew what that was and it didn't terrify them completely that something just landed on their nose, they might be delighted. It really depends on how we interpret these perceptions and what's happening to us. So when we have a perception like this and something happens, then we can instantly recognize if we're able to, I am influencing my experience of this Basically, based on the story that you're telling in that moment, we actually tell 
stories about what we're experiencing in that very moment. It's that interpretation. Why does this matter? Okay, here, um, this is the only, this is the other big, big, big concept today. This is something called polyvagal theory. And most of us have heard of fight or flight, right? It's, and some of the stories in the breakout rooms um, brought up some shocking incidents, <laughs> things that really get your attention, like, whoa, that was scary. Uh, and so the fight or flight response is for our survival. Um, and then it, if it goes farther and it really activates more of our nervous system, we can absolutely freeze up. And this is where sometimes you've heard it was an emergency and someone said, everyone evacuate, but people just froze glued to the floor and they didn't move. Um, that's where they just felt too much fear in that moment. So, and then if you look at the green in the picture here, that's the realm that's called social engagement. This is optimal, basically optimal for everything, optimal for learning, optimal for reality shifting, optimal for um, healing if you want to recover from something. I, I just heard a, a talk today by someone recovering from long COVID and he said the key for him is getting out of anxiety, is just letting go of freaking out about all the new symptoms that he kept experiencing. And instead just uh, going to see someone who did some massage therapy, some acupressure, getting back into that groundedness. Groundedness is essential for healing. So this polyvagal theory is some science behind why does it matter that you have a kind voice, that you have a soothing tone, um, why do those things matter to how we feel? Why do we feel better around some people or some situations? And this is why. So when we put this idea together with what we just saw just a moment ago, which is that perception and the interpretation, then you start getting the biggest idea that I'm sharing today, which is when you, when you first sense things, often we know we want to make a shift because we think something's wrong or we think something could be better. So even though that may be true, our best ability to make that reality shift, a, a very miraculous change. These are the things I'm talking about and describing are literally in the realm of miracles. I have literally seen broken bones instantly healed, cancer instantly healed, burns instantly healed, pretty much you name it. Um, I've also seen miraculous money miracles where I could just pull dollar bill out of dollar bill out of my wallet. I've seen money disappear in my bank account and I have a, an MBA degree. So I've done the uh, financial checkup to see what happened. And it, it suddenly it was just always there. This is the level of changes to reality that are possible. But for optimal results, we're gonna need to practice getting into that very calm state of mind. Okay, now a little bit more physics. I've intersp interspersed it, so um, it's not too much. I promise this, this is almost the last of the physics, <laughs> but it's really important. Now, if you've ever heard of something called the double slit experiment, bear with me for just a minute. This has been called the most elegant experiment in all of science. And what we're seeing in this picture is a scientist looking at a device, this very simple device. He's actually part of the experiment, but doesn't know it yet. So we, it's essential that you have the observer, that's the scientist. You have the particle emitter, which is sending out one photon at a time. Right in front of the scientist, you see a double slit device where the particle can either go through one or the other slit. And then there's a screen over on the right where the scientist can see what happens when one photon at a time is fired through. And you'll see on the left and right, there's two different possibilities. One possibility is that the photon traveled like a little paintball and it just went splat and it created two uh, very clear columns where the two slits are. The other possibility is that somehow the photon or the, it doesn't matter what kind of quantum particle you're sending, but usually these are studies with photons. It somehow interfered usually with itself and started creating a diffraction pattern, which is like when you throw two pebbles in a pond and you get the ripples creating interference patterns, um, constructive and destructive interference patterns. So Here's the big deal. The big deal is that what seems to have the biggest effect on whether you're getting a particle or a wave with this experiment is what is the observer looking at? And if the observer puts a detector in the slit so he knows for sure which slit it went through, then, the then it behaves like a particle. If he does not, then it behaves like a wave. Um, 
And then the other piece of this is this idea that there's a superposition of states possible. So when those waves, those particles are going through the device, it's kind of like they're all over the place. Therefore, they can interfere with themselves. And a physicist named Erwin Schrodinger proposed this ludicrous experiment. He said, this is ridiculous. If you're saying what I think you're saying, which is that quantum particles can be both a particle and a wave, or it can be in two places at the same time, so it interferes with itself. You're saying that it's, that's as ludicrous as saying that a cat inside of a box who's um, exposed to a poison that's controlled by a quantum device, in other words, a, a radioactive isotope that has a little um, random number generator to, attached to it, so no one knows when this quantum device will trigger, activate, and the hammer will drop, breaking a glass bottle of poison, which then instantly kills the imaginary cat. No cats were actually harmed in the conduction of this experiment. So when we look at that, that sounds ludicrous, right? However, we have now reached a point, here we are in 2021, even 10 years ago, a majority of physicists were already agreeing that this ludicrous possibility is what they believe in to be true. And they were surveyed as they left a conference, more than two thirds of those physicists that are our top physicists in the world believe there is no limit to quantum theory. It does not only apply to just the quantum realm, but instead it does apply to you and me and everyone and everything else. And in my book, Quantum Jumps, I, I, did, I omitted a particular scientist who is world famous and I told him I, about that omission that it was a mistake on my part, but he did not exist when I wrote the book in 2013. And he completely understood and asked for a copy of the book. So this is where we are right now, that scientists do understand that we can literally move between possible realities. We've got further proof just two years ago um, from an experiment that was conducted, which will be replicated, I'm sure. And it was proving with that same double slit experiment, but a very specific version of it, that two devices at the same place and same time absolutely get different results. And so um, it really brings into question this huge idea that we've assumed for most of the dawn of Western uh, civilization, that there is such a thing as objective reality, that the moving finger writes and having writ moves on. And, just like that Rubiat from Omar Khayyam, but actually not necessarily true. You can have a life-threatening illness, like my grandmother was diagnosed with inoperable liver cancer, and it can completely vanish. It is That is what happened. And so her doctor said they didn't know what happened, but she was a very spiritual woman. Lots of, hundreds of people were praying for her. And I do believe this, these sorts of things make a difference. And here I am with a, uh, one of the hippies who saved physics, George Weissman, he's in that book, The Hippies Who Saved Physics, and he and I co-authored a paper called The Quantum Paradigm and Challenging the Objectivity Assumption. All of my research papers are, and the Parabola article, well, maybe not that one, but all the rest of them are available on my realityshifters.com website. Um, if I've got the rights to share it, then it's there. So this paper basically showed what this um, experiment that came along the next year or two demonstrated. Absolutely, our subjective realities matter. And that might be the true nature of reality itself. So when we look for what does everyone agree on, that could be the wrong thing to be looking for completely. Instead, we'd be better to find peace with one another when we don't agree, when we have different realities, different stories. And so this is the idea that I, I want to tie in with those two things we talked about earlier. Remember Leibniz and that first order perception, and then the stories that you tell about it, how you interpret that first perception makes all the difference in the world. That's because you are both the actor and the observer. And we can get to this place of hyper conscious, multi-dimensional awareness through meditation, lucid dreaming. If you happen to have a near-death experience that qualifies, I don't recommend seeking one out. And then any kind of exceptional human experience, such as if you've seen UFOs or witness the Mandela effect, that qualifies. So these are ways that you can recognize that you can remember basically that this might be a dream and you can change things. So if it is a dream, and you know, sometimes in a dream, you can kind of suddenly the whole scene changes, you'll be in one room and suddenly you're in the next room. 
Um, that kind of thing could be possible with our waking reality too. I don't really see a reason why not. In other words, that would be basic teleportation. Quantum particles can do it. Um, I've been observed to bilocate on a few occasions, so it seems possible. But let's start with just the beginning idea that you can sense adjacent subjective realities. And you can get, this is a fun picture. It's showing your peripheral vision. If you hold your hands up at the sides of your face, and keep moving them back toward your ears, you can see how far your peripheral vision goes. This is just a measure of that first order perceptual ability. And then uh, this is one of the ways you can improve their yoga for the eye exercises. And this is a good one to strengthen your eyes, improve that subjective, that, um, that expanse of what's visible to you. And I'm just using it as a metaphor for sensing adjacent possible realities. Here's a very surreal picture and it's just to prompt us to think, what would you most love to experience in your life? So if you could imagine anything, and a lot of us limit ourselves. We feel like, well, I can't do the thing I'd really love to do. Um, but, and okay, maybe that may be true right now for various reasons in the world. But once things return more to normal, I'd like everyone attending today to challenge yourself and ask yourself, what would you most love to experience? really open it up and with the idea in mind that what we focus on and when we focus on what we love and what we need and we bring our attention there that actually literally selects how events subsequently unfold I've, I've seen this many times in my life that's one of those things where you know when you witness it it's just mind-blowing um, I, I like to ask the question how good can it get and I recommend people do that and what, I've heard so many excellent reports back just from that one exercise. So people say that things weren't going so well. They were on hold, for example, and the, the, the person on the other end line was not was telling them like, we can't get your, you, you can't get booked on this flight. The whole flight's full, it's impossible. But the person just thinks, okay, how good can it get? Instead of, remember that chart that I showed you, instead of going to fight or flight, instead of freezing, because then you're locking in some undesirable reality. You want to stay calm. And sometimes simple um, mantra, like how good can it get? Even if you just think it to yourself and just breathe deeply and relax, um, you'll be amazed at what can happen next. And um, in the case of that person on the phone, suddenly like, oh, I guess, uh, wait a minute. I think something is here. Hold on just a second. And this happens to me all the time. I do this all the time. So instead of Freaking out, which is our natural human reaction uh, from Stone Age times, perhaps, when there really was a tiger chasing us. But now it's more like somebody that you're talking to on the phone, something like that. Um, you can stay calm and just reset. And the more we meditate, the easier that becomes. Basically, we want to practice getting ourselves out of the way. And here's an illustration uh, and a quote. This is Alonzo King and working um, just choreographing dancers. Basically, the idea is to get yourself out of the way so that what's larger can enter. And this is the concept that whatever problem, whatever level consciousness caused the problem, you want to get to something greater. And there's always a higher level, greater order to reality. There's an author, Carolyn North, and she has this beautiful observation and quote, yes, that is my search and has been since the third grade to listen and feel for that larger world to enter in all its moods and dimensions, all its feelings and wonderments. I believe those who think only with their brains have no idea what they're missing. So what does she mean? She means, um, you know, if you've ever gotten cold feet before you made a choice, like to get engaged to someone or to make a choice one way or the other, listen to that, that feeling. If you get um, butterflies in your stomach, and it's a lot more than just stage fright. It feels like, yeah, don't do this, then listen to that. And on the other hand, if you feel this bubble of excitement and joy and energy that's very positive in your body, um, you, there is wisdom in our entire physical being. And that's the nervous system is spread throughout. Now, scientists are noticing we've got a brain in our guts. So this is a real thing. And even more than that, ourselves, you can start harmonizing with uh, your sense of higher self or deep self and the environment itself. 
And James Hillman says that an individual's harmony with his or her own deep self requires not merely a journey to the interior, but a harmonizing with the environmental world. So this is what I'm talking about. It all boils down to this idea of three kind of, a, it's a snowman. And when I work with clients, I use this approach to tune in before each session. I do a meditation and I, I, I ask myself, how is this person feeling? What do they need at their level of high self, at their middle self and at their low self? And when you ask those questions, how are you feeling? What do you need? How are you feeling? What do you need? <laughs> how are you feeling? What do you need? And you move through layers of yourself, amazing insights can come through. Things that you might never have really even thought of. And they're extraordinarily relevant. There's wisdom in every moment of your day moving through your life. And so when I do that for a client, then I type it up and share it. I do a blind reading. So forgetting who the person is the best I can and just tapping into what am I feeling? And then when I share that, stories and, and sharing opens up and it, 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 it makes it possible for me to work one-on-one -on -one with someone who is making changes in their lives and being able to see deeper, much more deeply into their connection to the outer world, to the adjacent realities that are right there for them to find out how good can it get for them, really. And we can all do this. So it's not just something that you have to see someone who can do it for you. You can actually ask yourself, maybe not breaking it down into those detailed parts, but just get used to asking yourself like right now, how am I feeling and what do I need? And just like play it like it's truth or dare and just say it to yourself. So there's nobody else listening, hopefully. Sometimes this can seem scary for some reason, but it's one of the best things you can do to be your own best friend. Because we're living in a holographic multiverse, this holographic model, that's an interpretation of quantum physics, again, presented by the scientist David Bohm, was the first one to come up with a holographic interpretation. The multiverse and many worlds was another idea proposed by another physicist, uh, Hugh Everett III. But whichever, I like them both, so I like to talk about the holographic multiverse, because to me, that's what it feels like, that everything's connected, it's all one, but within that oneness, there are all these subjective bubbles of reality that we often share quite a bit, but we also often can experience our own miracles, our own sense of joy and wonder. And so that was the main thing. Um, I'm going to lay the groundwork and just present something that can be an exercise. We can, if we have time, Anna, we can do this as a breakout. Um, we just totally have time. Perfect. And then we can have. Um, just wrap it up after that. Yeah, so this is really fun. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna do the groundwork and tell you guys what this will be. And in the little breakout groups, you can, um, the prompt is this, you're gonna imagine your life as a different reality. And you can choose whether or not you share this with people, of course, because this is very personal. Sometimes our greatest dreams are also, it's like when a woman becomes pregnant and you don't wanna share that you're even pregnant in the first trimester because, and why is that? Well, there's a good reason for that. You only wanna share it with people who absolutely want to see how good can it get for you genuinely with, and, I, and you know what? I recommend we all start doing that for each other, for ourselves and for each other. Because to me, it's obvious that is heaven on earth. When it's the best possible world for each of us, there's enough for all of us. And then you've got a world where the people who are the chefs really love cooking and the people who are the artists love making art and so on and so forth. So when you imagine your life as a different reality, um, that's the first step. Just start kind of going into that. And if you've got paper and pencil, just um, you can sketch things. You can write a few notes. You can write it down like a daydream. And it's up to you how much you share. So you don't really actually have to share that part if you don't want to. But what you can share, this, this part's okay to share, to start noticing how do you feel about this in your body. And this is fine to share because you're not, um, it's kind of like if you're pregnant, you're not saying you're pregnant. You're just saying like, I think I have a bit of a stomach ache. <laughs> and then people can say, okay, um, it, you, can, you can share notes on what kind of physical feelings are you getting and what kind of clues might these be? Because this is where the story comes in. And I mentioned this ties in beautifully. Our bodies talk to us all the time, but often it's in the form of something that's very, um, subconscious. So first, this is a um, sort of a, 
a multi-step process. First, notice that you have this idea of another possible life that you could be living. It might be just adjacent to this one. Notice how you feel about it. Uh, sort of feel it in your body. And then if you're willing to, you, not everyone has to do this, but if you want to, you can describe like, it's really weird, but I'm thinking about this amazing dream and I'm getting these kind of feelings. And it just, um, it's an opportunity to find out you're not the only one having them. Um, because I think a lot of us feel pressure, like, well, it's your dream. It should be perfect. Actually, what happens is we get some resistance and that's what makes it uh, interesting because then we can find and listen to what is that resistance and go deeper. But let's just do this first part. So let's, if people want to go further and you've done something like this and you feel like I got this, that's fine. But um, let's just start it with this very basic beginning part into breakout rooms for maybe if we have time, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, um, maybe five is good, but whatever, what, whatever you think, Anna. We can do the same 10 is 10 minutes guys. You said is, is feeling short. So, okay. We, that is as short as I think we could go. Let's and, do 10 and meaningful. In that case, if people feel like you feel like you might know that there's a story about it, tell the story and it doesn't, and you're not revealing too much. It's kind of like, I've got a weird feeling in right now. And it reminds me of, and you can talk about that. I promise you that will give you the information you need. That's still secret, sacred, personal. You don't have to share your, your best dream to the whole world. If you don't feel ready yet, that's okay. But you can, it's okay to share. Like I'm getting this weird feeling, which reminds me of a time, maybe when you were little, or maybe last week. Um, and it doesn't have to make sense. It's just a story. So, thank you. And, and I'm so glad Matt did the story thing. That's perfect. Perfect. All right, Lindy, can you break everybody out into their rooms? So let's see. Okay, we have everybody back in the room. Welcome back. Welcome back. Show me in the chat. Did you what was your experience like? Share with us. Go to the chat box there. Type it in. What did you experience? How was it? Not enough time. Okay. We're going oh. to try and get our experts to <laughs> to get you into those rooms five minutes more at least. Yeah. What, it's good. It's good freaky. feedback. Yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful and freaky. <laughs> I love it. Oh wow. Three people in the same situation. That is not an accident. Oh my gosh. That That's is, so cool. That's I was amazing. thinking the same thing when I, we were in the room. I thought, well, this happened on purpose. <laughs> You sourced it. Absolutely. This is this is part of what Cynthia is talking about. Yeah. And before she leaves, Cynthia, I would love for you to just wrap this up for everybody. Yes. And then tell them about your giveaway. Okay. Well, to wrap this up, um, basically, the, the key idea is um, when you want to shift reality, and I think we, we do it all the time, we know we do. So if, if that's a new concept today, hold on to that. It's like, I'm shifting reality. I'm a quantum mechanic of my own life. I can do this. Yes, you can. And you do have permission to shift. I love the name of this whole program this weekend. So that's the idea. If you feel like you're getting heartburn like or stomach cramps or something weird, when you think of your dream, it's talking to you. You are talking to yourself. So this now the conversation begins. And if, you, if stuff came up in the stories when you were looking at things, um, that's the beginning of a dialogue that you're having with levels of yourself. And the more you listen to yourself and keep asking, how do I feel? What do I need? You can begin to open that up and clear it and work with those higher levels of yourself that know easily, effortlessly how to get to how good can it get. And that's where I recommend uh, you stay focused. When things seem good, ask how good can it get anyway? When things seem kind of blah, ask how good can it get? When things seem kind of like, oh, it's not so good, ask how good can it get? It guides the entire experience and it's just super wonderful. So that's, that's my big tips for today. And this is the giveaway. This is my own copy of it. I'll give you a brand new one. This one's got dog-eared and stuff. This is reality shifts. When consciousness changes the physical world and it shares examples of how um, you can experience the kinds of things I'm talking about today and how this has happened for other people where they've had a, a watch that was broken, suddenly fixed, um, things teleporting. It's really cool. And, and a dead cat was back alive again. That's quite remarkable. It sounds 
outrageous, but it's so much fun. So this is our giveaway today, Reality Shifts. And awesome. Anna, Anna can you help us awesome. select someone? <laughs> I absolutely can. So ladies and gentlemen, if your camera is off, you are not qualified for this exercise. Turn on your cameras. And Cynthia, I really liked what Matthew did. He yeah. sourced a number and then he counted. And I will ask you then, what's the number that you're sourcing right now? Um, I just saw, I saw three, nine. So I don't know, is that 30, do we, I don't know how many people we have here or if that makes well, sense. Well, let's add three and nine together and that will okay. give you 12. 12. So go for 12. And then how do I see what's going on here? My screen is, um, hang on. So then I just look at the screen and go to number 12 here on pictures. Yes, you do. Okay. Let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then it jumped. I don't have everybody on one thing. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then the next screen. And it looks like I'm looking at I'm trying to read the name. It's Sky. I'm trying to, to put my this is a very tiny font here. Looks like S L I J T Prajapati. Is that right? Did I pronounce that badly? Oh, you got, Su you know what? Sujit won one thing already today. So oh. <laughs> the one to the left. Who's one, one to the left? Okay. And that's Donna. Donna that's already won something today. This is insane. <laughs> one more to the left. <laughs> okay. And that would be, this is funny. We have winners today. The winning energy. Okay. It looks like Janina Bisley. Janina, you haven't won anything yet, have you? Well, I've just bought the book on Amazon, so I'd like to donate it to. Oh. If, if, no, no, no. So if we if we add those numbers, that makes three. So whoever is number three. So uh, thank you. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> see, it proves we're all winners, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. So who's number three? Okay, number three. That would be. I see Annette, and then all of me. Is that it? Um, <laughs> there she Next. is yay okay Annette. yay <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> wonderful oh that was fun okay <laughs> Annette, i want to get you to to drop a private message with your contact info to the chat support i mean you can publicly put it out there but that may not be your end game <laughs> depending i don't know and then that will wrap up our session. But before we go, the question. Yes. You are sitting in front of your younger self at a period in life where you had to make the biggest shift. What do you say? My biggest shift? Oh, that, that was a big question. Like, which was, what was that? My young, and I'm sitting in front of my younger self. Wow. I, I've made so many big changes. It's hard to pick just one. Um, it seems like, and I've actually felt the presence of my um, my future self at many points in my life too. I've literally seen her come to me, and she, so this is—it's not even a hypothetical. It's very weird. It's—it's it's actually happened, and I write about it in reality shifts. Believe it or not. Um, so what my older self was saying to me, she, this actually did happen. Um, I was 16 at the time, or 15, and she just glided through the closet door, and she was just very loving saying um, it was tele telepathic. I was talking out loud, so loud that it got my father to come check on me. Um, she was telepathically just sh shining so much love on me. Like I, she loved me so much and just giving me so much confidence and just the sense of you're going to be fine. Everything's great. And then she proceeded to remove things from my desk that later went missing. So the whole thing took on this extraordinarily significant aspect in my life. What those letters were or love letters that my first boyfriend had written to me. I, he was my first husband. And then at some point in my life, I decided, um, can we get divorced? Is this the right thing to do? It was a very difficult decision. And it mattered to me then. And I suddenly realized it makes sense that she would, that's like me giving me permission. It's okay. That even though that was your childhood love, it's okay to move on. You're going to be fine. So it, it, the whole thing took on different levels of meaning throughout my life. So it actually happened. <laughs> Weirdly. Oh, 
Well, thank you so much, Sue. And I know we have some links to drop in the chat so you can get in touch with her if you want to learn more about reality shifting, you want to dig into this topic. Like all of my speakers and experts, loads and loads and loads of information on the topic and a newsletter, Reality Shifters newsletter that goes out yes. monthly. If you would like to subscribe, she does not spam you. <laughs> she promises not to spam you. And you get free and gifts when you sign up for the newsletter too. So yeah, so amazing. It's all Thank win, win, win. So Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you.